Hi, thank you for hosting me today. It's my pleasure. My name is Medhat Mahmoud, and I am working as a postdoc fellow in Sidla Czech Laboratory. I'm interested in uh, comprehensive genomics, studying of structural variant, single nectite variation, and also building software and the framework for comprehensively understand of variants. Today, I shall present to you, Princess. Princess is a framework for comprehensive detection and phasing of single nucleotide variant and structural variant. I will begin by give a brief introduction. In general, there is a lot of application for sequencing. I will mention a few of them here. First of all, medical application, including identification of genomic causes of rare diseases, understanding uh, variant in uh, complex diseases, characterization of mutation that um, cause or drive cancer progression, for studying forensic analysis, to have a better understanding of, of evolution, drug discovery and, and epigenetics, which is the study of uh, phenotypic changes that does not include inherited sequence changes. And lastly, for ecological studies. In the beginning, uh, we could classify sequencing into three stages or three main categories. First generation, second and third generation. For first generation, I will give an example here. Sanger, one of the pioneer sequencing the machinery of the tools, which would giving a high accurate read, reaching up to 1,000 bits per. This was followed directly by second generation sequencing. I will give an example here like an Illumina. Second generation sequencing revolutionized the idea of sequencing by performing parallel sequencing, which gave a high throughput with high accuracy data and the reads was reaching around from 50 to 500 bits per. This was followed directly by third generation gene sequencing, so sorry, third generation sequencing, like BagBio and Oxford Nanopore. The importance of third generation sequencing is that they were sequencing DNA in real time, so there is no amplification, and the read length is reaching on average 20 KB. It, of course, it may increase on that. As you can see from that, the sequencing itself also could be classified into two categories, short reads and long reads. Long reads added a lot to the table by enhancing genome assembly and identification of structural variant based on the increased read length of the reads. Here I will give you an example, TMT case. TMT is a gene that encodes the enzyme that metabolizes cyrobean drugs. There is possibility that two variants could happen in the TMT gene. These variants are 8 KB apart. If we can take a look to the down slide part, to the cis part, where well, there are two blue bars, let's say that this is our, the genes. In case of cis, we have this red bars, which is a variant, happened in one copy of the enzyme. But the other one is working, meaning now we have one copy still working, but the other is not. So the patient is still able to metabolize drugs. If we take a look to the other bars, the trans, we can see that this red variant, one having in the first block and the other in the second block, meaning one having in the first copy of the enzyme and the other having in the second copy. This means that the two copies of the gene encoding the enzyme is not working. This will lead to the accumulation of drugs, which is not helpful at all and could lead to toxication. As you can see from here, we need not only to study the variant, but also if they are associated together or not, which is called the block or phasing block. Based on that, we need, if we are interested in sample or disease or an organism, the first thing come to our mind is to study synchronicitide variation, SNVs for short. SNVs is a study of the difference in on nucleotide basis between either two sample or one sample and a reference. Like as we can see here, in one and two, there is a difference in where the arrow is pointing between CG 
and TA. This is called SNV or singular nucleotide variant. The best tool or technology to study this variant is Illumina. Next is to study structure variation, for short STVs. STV is a kind of variant that different in size from SNVs. The size range from 50 bits per to more than that. For example, here, there is deletion, where is a portion of the sequence are deleted from the sample compared to the reference. Insertion, where the new sequence was inserted into the sample, again, compared to the reference. Duplication, a portion or part of the gene or the genomic sequence is duplicated to have one or more copies. Inversion, where the direction of the sequence is self-inverted. To study structural variant, the best tool we can use is BackBio or Oxford Nanobore. They give us long reads, which overcome the complexity of the genomes. And if the structural variant is large, we still can detect it in an easy way. Second step, as we learned from the previous slide, is phasing. Phasing is the study of the coexistence of variant together. For example, here, there are two groups of variant, one marked with this green bar, and the other is the black bar. So we can see that the green variant are having it together in one block, this blue genomic region, and the black variant having in the other block. To study phasing, the best tool that we could use at the moment is 10x genomics. Last but not least is methylation. Methylation is adding of methyl group in carbon number five. That will not change the, the sequence, but could affect the expression. To study that, we could use Illumina, which is the best case performance here, or the standard. As you can see here, we use different library preparation and different technology. That will lead to introduction of two kinds of bias, from library preparation and from the technology itself. Besides that, we need a larger amount of DNA for each library preparation. Meanwhile, we could avoid that by using only long read, either it's Oxford Nanobore or BackBio, which will lead also to have some in, the same information that we could retrieve. But from that, we, the most important point is we need to have a better understanding. To have a better understanding, we need to improve the identification of structure variant and single nucleotide variant. We need to improve phasing, and we need to identify methylation. And the most important point is how they interact together. For such purpose, I was inspired to develop Princess. Princess is a framework for integrated state-of-the-art tool to study and analyze long reads. So now the user has decided to either go for BackBio or Oxford Nanobore, and then he have his reads. First step of Princess, which will take the reads as an input, it will give the user statistics about the reads, like number of reads, number of bases, N50, or the amount of reads that he have, the longest, shortest, and so on. And based also on this information, Princess will implicitly choose and optimize the parameter for each running step. First step that Princess will run is mapping. And for mapping, we're using either NGMLR or Minimap. And again, it will optimize the parameter for each case and based on the library also. The next step after mapping is to identify single nucleotide variation. To identify single nucleotide variant, we use CLAIR. CLAIR is a successor of Clairvoyant, which is a neural network-based program to call SNVs. Princess will choose the optimal parameter and the model to call SNVs. Meanwhile, or in parallel actually, Princess will begin to start calling a structure variant using sniffles. When the calling of SNVs or single nucleotide variant are done, the, other, the second process is a start, which is phasing using WhatsApp and Princess sub tool. After phasing, there is an optional step. If the parental SNPs are available for the user, it could be used to leverage the identified and phased SNVs and identify the haplotype for each SNP. Another optional step is the methylation using nanopolish. 
Also, it will be phased demethylation and haplotyped. Lastly, this will be the full framework, beginning from the reads till the end output. For each step, we will give the user quality matrix statistics about what is happening in, in that step. So we will have a better understanding and bigger overview. And the end result will be two files. The first is the variant file containing phased and haplotype structural variant and single nucleotide variant. The second file is the missilation, also phased and haplotype. As we can see here, for instance, first it estimate parameter implicitly. It's run on cluster, workstation, and in the cloud. The output file is simplified to three files. The first is a single file for both SNVs and structure variant, phase and haplotype. The second file is also phase and haplotype isolation. And the last file is the quality matrix. What we can see here, that we manage to identify single nucleotide variant, we managed to identify structural variant. We phased both SNVs and structural variant, and we identified and phased missilation using one library of regression by the help of Princess. Now it's time for benchmarking. We need to benchmark the performance of Princess. To do that, we use the genome in a bottle, Constarium data, HG002. Here, I will give you an overview about the data that we used. From left to right, first data is BagBio circular consensus read for short CCS data. CCS data is high fidelity, high accurate data, reaching around the 99% accuracy. The data that we used was of insert size or average read length around 15 KB. The next data that we used is BagBio continuous long reads for short CLR. It's another back bio, back bio data. It's longer than CCS, but it's of high error rate, reaching around 10%. The average read length that we used here was around 10 KB. Last is Oxford Nanobore, another long read technology. We used here Oxford Nanobore with average size around 15 K. The next step is to single nucleotide variant benchmark. For that, we also developed an implicitly called in princess filtering mechanism to decrease false positive result. This filtering mechanism is implicitly called by princess, but the user also can choose otherwise. We compared the results that we have from our filtering mechanism to the data of gold standard, genome in a bottle, and we compared it using RTG tool. Here is the result. If we look to the table, <clears throat> sorry, it shows us the result of one flu cell. For one flu cell, the coverage for CCS could roughly be around 10x, and for back bio, CLR, and ONT, it will be 25x. We managed to achieve a high precision, reaching around 99.5% in CCS data, and 97 and 92 for CLR and ONT, respectively. If we look to the plot on the right-hand side, we compared increasing the coverage on exercise on the x-axis from 5 to 95x with the F measure. F measure is a way or as an equation to relate it to the precision and recall, meaning the amount of the truly identified SNV compared to the amount that we lost or the amount that we misidentified and the one that identified in the wrong way. As we can see clearly, by increasing the coverage, we increase the F measure. So as clear we can uh, see with CCS data in red, that we are reaching around 97% or more. For ONITY and CLR data in blue and green, we could reach also around 95. We was not only interested in benchmarking SNVs, but we also benchmark in genotypes. Genotype could be identified by four ways. First, clear itself, it will give directly the genotype. The other one is WhatsApp regenotype, so it takes the input from clear and regenotypes the data. 
And there are other two cases in phasing. What's a have trust? So it directly trusts the input data. And this trust, it does not trust the genotype data and regenotype data. If we look here to the plot on the right-hand side, we can see the comparison between, on the x-axis, the methods that used for genotype, beginning from clear, what's a have regenotype, and what's have trust and distrust. And the uh, percentage of correctness that you could achieve. You could clearly see that CLEAR achieved the highest percentage of correctness, reaching around 99% in case of CCS data, followed by CLR and Oxford Nanopore in around 95. Based on this figure and the data that we have, we managed to know that. The best result is directly from genotype, uh, from the CLEAR genotype, and in phasing, we should use the phasing trust data, which gives the best result. As you can see here, using what we have trust, we reached accuracy of 97% of CLR, 99% in CCS, and 95% in Oxford Nanopore. So now we benchmark SNVs and genotype. Next is to benchmark structural variants. We use the gold standard through set from genome in a bottle also. And we use TrueVary to compare what we managed to achieve with the true set. Here, here is the result. Again, for one flu cell, we managed to achieve a high precision, reaching 94% in CCS, followed by CLR and Oxford, nan Oxford Nanobore, 93 and 85%, and also managed to achieve a high sensitivity. For the graph here, we compared if we increase the coverage, what we will result, what will be the result. So we compare the coverage on the x axis with the f measure on the y axis. By increasing uh, the result, we could reach to uh, more than 92% f measure in case of CCS data. And for both Oxford Nanobore and CLR, we also managed to reach around 91, 92% of f measure. The last thing that we want to benchmark is phasing. Here I will give you the explanation of the phasing parameter that we will use to benchmark phasing. I will begin with N50 on the left-hand side. Let's see that. Let's say that we have a chromosome in this blue bar with a length of 400. And we managed to identify five blocks or five phasing blocks ranging from size of 150 to 40. We will sort the phasing blocks from the longest to the shortest, and we then calculate half length of the chromosome. In our case, it will be 200. We will begin to add these blocks one by one till we reach greater than or equal to 100. So if we add 150 to 80, we will reach to 230, which is greater than 200, and the last block or the last shorter block, block that reached to this amount was 80. Based on this information, we could see that N50 is 80. The second parameter is switching and hamming error rate. Let's say that we have two blocks, A and B. This is the true phasing. And A is zeros and B is one. What we predicted, on the other hand, we could see that there is here where the arrow is pointing, a switch error. This one should be in the B block, not in the A block. Based on this information, we could see that we have one switching error that led to four hamming errors. These ones are four hamming errors. So for phasing benchmarking, we compare the coverage on the x-axis from 5 to 95. And the first plot here is N50, and the y-axis is N50 lens. It's clearly from this graph that Oxford Nanoborn in blue achieves the highest N50 over CCS and CLR. But this was costing. As you can see, the switch error rate for Oxford Nanobor was higher than CCS and CLR. But also, we can see that overall, the switch error rate was less than 0.008. And by increasing the coverage, we could decrease the switch error rate. So which error rate, as we saw from the previous slide, will lead to a hamming error rate. 
Of course, as expected, Oxford nanopore will have the highest Hamming error rate, followed by CLR and CCS. As we can see also, all of the three data set was less than 0.4. And if you look to the CCS and red, it nearly was zero because of the high accuracy data. For one flu cell, as we compared earlier, comparing the N50 only, as you can see, Oxford nanobore at the last row managed to achieve around 17.4 megabits per of N50, followed by CLR and CCS with 15, 0.15 and 0.12 megabits per. Another thing that we was interested in benchmarking is different CCS insert size. I will give you an introduction about what is an insert size. An insert size for CCS data is if we look to this plot or this graph here, we have the smart belt template. Uh, the green part is the ligase sequence, and this cloud of gray is the enzyme. The enzyme will begin to move in this arrow direction in a circle, in multiple circles. With each circle, he will sequence the insert size, which is yellow and blue. Let's say that the enzyme will move only two times and then full. So we will have the polymerase read. As you can see from the polymerase read, we have four subreads because the enzyme moved only two circles, but normally it's more than that, of course. And then we will have the circular consensus read or read of insert in the black bar. Know that the shorter the insert is, that will increase the number of rounds that the enzyme moves. Here we convert CCS of different insert size on the X axis, 15, 20, 15, 19, sorry, 20 and 25. And the SV benchmarking was the percentage on the Y side, on the Y axis, comparing F measure in red, precision in green, and sensitivity in blue. If we look to the upper part of the plot here with the overall performance, we can see that the overall, the insert size does not affect much the F measure precision and recall of the data. We are reaching around from 95 to 99. Same for SNB, SNV calling with the even higher F measure sensitivity and recall. For indel insertion and deletion, because of the varying in size, it was also varying in F measure and precision and recall. But there is an interesting thing here to notice. In the case of 25K, if we look to the overall and SNPs bar, we could see that the difference between F measure sensitivity and recall, and uh, sorry, and recall is changing. That could be due to the large, large as insert size. If you remember from the previous slide, by increasing the insert size, we could have or could lead to lower number of rounds of the enzyme, which will decrease sensitivity a little bit, but overall it's still over 95. Besides that also, we compared the insert size effect on the structural variant. As you can see here, the difference was really, really narrow. The F measure was in red is maybe, you know, like roughly the same, around 90% with a higher precision. Princess was already have been in use, so we used it in Central of Common Disease Genomics, or CCDG for short. In CCDG, we comprehensively identify rare risk and the protective variant. We are focusing on cardiovascular disease and neuropsychiatric disease. We develop resources, informatic tools, and innovation approaches, innovative approaches for to reach the community. In CCDJ data, we used whole genome sequencing and short reads. But as you know, short reads have its own limitation, like feeling of uh, detecting some SNVs in certain region. Besides the uh, lack to detect some structural variant in insertion and complex region. Here is an overview of the project. We have around, uh, we, ha we sequenced around 44 or more than 44,000 samples using short reads for whole genome sequencing. To have a better understanding and to dive deeper, deeper, we need to use long reads. But for this amount of data, it will be a little bit impossible. 
What we did is to have an informative sample selection based on the disease context of this sample, so we can be sequencing them long reads. So we selected that, and we used long reads. And for long reads, we began to develop technologies and strategies and pipeline, so we have a comprehensive understanding. And then we will validate the complex variant. We identify novel structural variant. We'll have phasing information, and also we'll build an ethnicity variant catalog. Here, what we did, we begin with short reads for whole genome sequencing. We use SV collector, which optimally select samples that represent the cohort and choose the different context of diseases or the variants causing diseases in the cohort. After selecting sample, we sequencing them with long reads. Then we use the brain cells for comprehensive detection or comprehensive understanding of variant. Later, we used paragraph to regional type data, and we identified the new structure variant and build the catalog. Here is the real data that we used. We selected 11 samples <clears throat> from multiple ethnicity group. We sequencing them in back bio, and also we have RNA seq for them. This is was was run on the, was run in this data to have a variant diction for all of SNVs and structure variant, and we identified and phased impactable structure variant, and we studied how they impacted the RNA seq. For for just an example, I will give here HLA-B. HLA-B is play an important or crucial role in the immune system. Here, by using princess, there is a comparison between two samples, the upper one, where there is a homozygote structural variant, and on the lower sample in green, there is a heterozygote structural variant. We compare that to the uh, expression. We could clearly see the difference between the homozygous and the heterozygote variant on the RNA-seq expression. Overall, in conclusion, Princess could use long read either from Oxford Nanopore or from BackBio, and will give the current information. It will map the read using NGM and R or Minimap. It will identify single nucleotide variant using CLAP. It will identify structure variant, both SNVs and the structure variant. It could extend the phasing and leverage information using parental SNPs information. It will identify and phase isolation, and it will give you a quality statistics for each step. So it is one step for all of this analysis using just one library preparation. Princess is already available in beta version on GitHub, so I will be more than happy if you give it a try, and I would like to learn or to hear from you about the feedback. About my ongoing and current or future work, actually, I'm trying to expand the QC statistics, benchmark misalation, and currently I'm developing another part of Princess called the high fidelity option. If you remember from the first slide, long reads like CLR and Oxford Nanobore have a higher error rate reaching around 9 to 10%. From the data we have, we have the BEM file, and we have information about the haplotype. In this workflow, I will try to extract the haplotype information or the reads from the BAM file, and then use self-correction to have a high-fidelity haplotyped reads. Then I will align them, and after aligning them, again, I will identify the SNVs and structural variant. This will lead to a high-fidelity identified phased and haplotyped SNVs and the structural variant. At the end of my talk, I would like to thank Human Genome Sequencing Center, especially Fred Sedlacek, Harsha, and Richard Gibbs, and of course, our hosts and our audience. Thank you.